Cash Peterson, if you don't know her name, you probably know her face from all of the media attention, often branded the new That Vegan Teacher or That Vegan Teacher's Daughter, which really confused me for a while. I thought she was That Vegan Teacher's Daughter because <laughs> I'm old. Point is, she's provocative like That Vegan Teacher, but rather than saying or singing controversial things, Tash goes to storefronts, restaurants, and screams about animal abuse. <laughs> She smears herself in her own period blood. Normal stuff. While disruptive protesting certainly isn't new, it certainly isn't common either. The vast majority of vegans and animal advocates do not do this sort of in-your-face activism, in-your-face protesting, but maybe we should. But first, why do this at all? Why do any form of activism? To influence people, right? To influence people to change their behavior. In this case, to convince people to stop eating animal products. So if a form of activism isn't doing that, it isn't convincing people, or it isn't convincing as many people as another form of activism, it isn't as effective as another form of activism, or it's actually having the opposite effect. So in this case, it's encouraging people to eat more animal products then we would want to avoid that form of activism. Maybe that sounds really simple and obvious, but I think it needs to be stated because I think it's too easy for activists to lose sight of that. I think it's all too easy to just assume that whatever activism you're doing is good because the fact you care enough to even do activism is good. It, it almost feels wrong to question people who are getting out there and trying to positively influence people. You're advocating for the environment. You're advocating for the animals. You care. You're being compassionate. It's good. It's all good. But if the ultimate goal, again, is to influence people, then it can't all be good. There's going to be forms of activism that are more effective than others. And there might even be some that are harmful. And study after study points to disruptive activism, even sometimes nonviolent disruptive activism, as being less effective or even being harmful. A very recent example of this, throwing soup at art shifted people's views of climate protests, but maybe not in the right way. So when asked if nonviolent disruptive actions decrease or increase support for efforts to address climate change, 40% of over 1,000 respondents said it had no effect, and 46% said it decreased support. Only 13% said it increased support. The youth protesters have their heart in the right place, but the organizations behind these protests need to do right by them by being smart about the design of any public interventions. That means, among other things, choosing sensible actions and appropriate targets. If we are to win the battle against polluters and their enablers, we will need public opinion on our side, not theirs. But what about veganism specifically? Are there any studies looking at vegan activism? There are. The wonderful people at Faunalytics published two studies back in 2022. They have their key findings and their recommendations here on their website, and you can also download the entire report for free. They do this, I believe, with all of their studies. All of the studies I've read from them are free, are available to the public, which is awesome. You don't have to pray to God it's on Sci-Hub. No, it's just, it's just on the website for free. This Faunalytics original study looks at the relative effectiveness of different advocacy tactics and how successful each is across both the short and long term. So what are their key findings? Well, one of them, protests showed inconsistent but troubling backfire effects for both meat eaters and meat avoiders, with disruptive protests causing more issues. On average, meat eaters reported 0.6 more weekly servings of animal products after watching a disruptive protest compared to those in the control group. Watching a disruptive protest, not being there, but watching footage of one, correlated with greater animal product consumption. What's the point of activism again? To influence people, right? To influence people to change their behavior. In this case, to convince people to stop eating animal products. Further, while meat avoiders tend to be more supportive of welfare improvements, significantly fewer meat avoiders signed the petition after watching either a disruptive or non-disruptive protest. Protests also had no effect on meat avoiders' diets or general support for farmed animal welfare. What form of activism was actually effective? news articles, and social media posts. However, that was just for the meat avoiders. So the flexitarians, vegetarians, pescatarians, meat eaters diets were unaffected by these forms of advocacy. So what do faunalytics recommend? Well, social media posts and news articles are good, right? They seem to positively influence meat avoiders and they don't negatively impact meat eaters. They don't correlate with an increased 
consumption of animal products, also their low cost. Protesting, on the other hand, the accumulated evidence to date, which is minimal and would benefit from further study, leads us to believe that their impact is neutral at best, negative at worst. Also, the goal of activism shouldn't be to be misleading or condescending or make people angry. So, that you know, this ain't it. This study or two studies, again, published in 2022. So this was before Cash Peterson did her whole stint at uh, that, fi- I want to say fire festival. It's fire restaurant. It's a different thing, a restaurant in Australia. I think he banned vegans from coming in. I don't know, vegans were annoying him or something. And so she did this whole thing at his restaurant. Point is, she did this after the phonolytic study. And the phonolytic study is not the only one. I've been talking about effective activism for years now on this channel. The evidence we've had on activism, on influencing people, on human psychology, and even on vegan activism specifically has pointed against stunts like these. And yet Tash and others continue to turn to them. It's very frustrating and it's hard not to see it as this is just what they want to do. What kind of person does this sort of thing, right? Let's be real. Even if the evidence said this were effective, I'm not going out there and doing that. I'm not going out and being confrontational and screaming at people. That sounds like, kill me. Most people do not want to do this sort of thing, but there are people, there are many people in this world who like to be confrontational, who like to get in people's faces, who like to scream and yell, who like to get into fights even. I highly suspect the type of people who do this sort of thing like it. This is the type of activism they want to do. And so this is what they do. I'm not saying Tash and others don't care about the animals. I think both can be true, right? I think she can deeply care about animals and animal welfare, but also really enjoy doing stunts like these. We're all biased, right? I'm more biased towards this sort of thing, right? There's a reason I just talk to the camera because that's what I like to do. I like to make videos. I like to be able to just turn it off and then go back to my normal life. Like I said, I don't want to go into restaurants and yell at people. (laughs) This is not fun. And I'm not even saying that what I'm doing is like the best thing. I don't think that at all, to be clear. To be clear, I think it's really, it's really impossible to study this sort of thing, to study activism, because we're not, again, we're not just interested in the influence it has on people, like their their beliefs about disruptive protesting or whatever, that's already hard enough to study. But we're also interested in the thing that comes after. We're interested, again, in the outcomes. Is this actually leading to less meat consumption? And even if we find that correlation, it's just a correlation. We cannot say that people who watch disruptive footage and then eat more animal products, that they're eating more animal products because of that footage. We also can't say that because someone read a bunch of social media posts, that's why they went vegan. Let's say someone says they're vegan and you ask them why and they say, well, I read Melanie Joy's book and that's what made me go vegan. Almost always there are other little things that came before, right? It's called planting a seed. Uh, That's what phonolytics says. And I forgot where that stems from. It's a vegan activist who started using that phrase, I believe. So maybe this person who says it was Melanie Joy, Melanie Joy's book, well, maybe they were on Instagram and a vegan influencer they follow recommended the book. And maybe they learned about that Instagram influencer because they were Googling factory farming and veganism. And maybe they were Googling factory farming and veganism because of a Tash Peterson stunt that at the time made them go, oh God, this is like, maybe they were even watching one of those like anti-vegan channels, you know, making fun of her. This now vegan was like in agreement with them. Like, right, oh my God, she's so ridiculous. I can't believe, like just let people eat what they want to eat. And now she's vegan because of Melanie Joy. But maybe she never would have discovered Melanie Joy and her fabulous book if it weren't for Tash Peterson. It's just a really hard thing to study. And actually, we see this in the uh, phonolytics studies. Let's see if I can find that quote. Non-disruptive protests also didn't change people's other behaviors in our experiment. Despite almost 40% of respondents who remembered experiencing them in our first study reporting reducing animal product consumption. So even though people might say, oh yeah, that experience led me to eat less animal products, Maybe it actually didn't. It's not like humans are good at remembering what we actually eat. So yeah, advocacy effectiveness is not an easy thing to study, but we should absolutely applaud the people who are trying to do it and listen to what they have to say, especially when it agrees with existing research. 
Behavior change occurs in stages, so advocacy types that only influence beliefs or intentions may still play a role in a long line of steps toward behavior change. And while we have strived to provide usable recommendations about all the advocacy types we considered, bear in mind that every study has its limitations and no single report should ever be taken as definitive proof of impact. I love Phonolytics so much. Every report I've read from them, it's always so carefully worded. They're always careful about causality and not to claim causality when it's just correlation, right? They're, they're always clear about that and about the limitations of their work. It's just a great organization. So if we really care about the animals, if we really care about influencing people to consume less animals, then we just, we shouldn't do this. It's just too risky to the cause. Now, if what we really care about is, uh, you know, something else, that's a different story. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe. And of course, thank you so much to my members and my patrons. They help to support the channel. And I do post exclusive content for tier two members and patrons. I post a vlog just talking about whatever random stuff's going on with me and the kids. And then I also do a controversial topic of like whatever I've talked about I don't even know numerous things over the last, what, year and a half that I've been doing this? Just stuff that's like not vegan related, you know, that I wouldn't really want to post to the channel. And that's it for me. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. Just to be clear, I don't think making money is inherently bad or anything, and I certainly don't care about OnlyFans. My only point there was that there is a financial incentive, right? Along with the like fun incentive, right? I think she probably has fun doing these sort of things and getting all of the intent attention. She also probably enjoys the money she's making and certainly getting this attention is leading at least some people to her OnlyFans, right? Which is making her money. So like just another reason to be careful with our advocacy. Another caveat I just thought of and I think maybe I should add, I would not lump in something like undercover footage with something like this. Like this is like a media stunt, right? Undercover footage, I think can be extremely impactful. In fact, going back to the climate change thing and throwing the, the soup <laughs> at the art, <laughs> does that have to do with anything? It's so weird. A study was mentioned that when the actions pertained to like bad actors, billionaires and their private jets, right? Oil companies, that got more support, right? People were more in support of that. And I think undercover footage probably uh, aligns with that, right? Falls more into that category. Going up to people like while they're eating, while they're having a night out with their family who they love and calling them murderers, right? It's probably gonna get people on the defensive. Whereas saying, hey, these guys over here, the, these guys making all the money, bunch of money you don't have, by the way, they're way richer than you. They're doing some heinous shit to animals. Isn't that awful? I think that's a lot easier for people to go, Fight, yeah, it's fucking terrible. And that might be why we see so many welfare initiatives becoming really popular. And it could also have to do with people not wanting to change their own actions, right? It's a lot easier to support some sort of ballot measure or to, you know, sign a, a change.org petition to McDonald's to treat their animals better or whatever. It's a lot easier easier to do that than like stop eating eggs, stop eating meat, or even just reduce your animal product consumption. Like that's a whole thing that you have to do on a daily basis. It's a lot less fun. Okay, so I have to share this. It's so funny. It's like the funniest website I've ever seen. It's this truth about fur. And they have this blog post I found because I was looking for examples of like disruptive um, activism from like vegan activists, right? And so of course, like throwing red paint or fake blood or whatever on fur comes up. Will red paint be thrown on me if I wear fur? This is an urban myth that's been around for decades. And we are here to assure you that it will not happen. <laughs> Animal rights activists don't carry around buckets of paint or blood and hope they will find someone to throw them on. <laughs> this is true, we don't. Or do we? I just love to imagine that they're just getting message after message from fur owners, like clutching their pearls. Like, oh my God, are we, are we gonna have our furs ruined if we wear them out in public? <laughs> if I walk around the streets of Portland, am I gonna be assaulted for my fur? So confident are we that wearing fur is safe. We set out to prove it. A few years back, one of our team wore visible fur pieces in public for 100 days over the winter. <laughs> 
Mostly she was in Vancouver, Canada, a hotbed of anti-fur sentiment. But she also spent time in London, England, also reputed to be intolerant of fur. The result? Lots of compliments, not a single negative comment, and of course, no paint attacks. I mean, it's funny till it's not funny. Like they have this whole part about animal rights, uh, not committing crimes in public and instead what do they say, vandalize farms under the cover of night or sneakily film animals being mistreated for months before showing anyone the evidence. Jesus Christ. So what are they even trying to say? So they're, they're trying to say that it's fake or are they just trying to say the animals are mistreated, but we don't really care. That's why we let it go on so long. Or they're just saying that the footage is real, but how the animals were treated isn't really mistreatment. Ooh, like which one of those is worse. I'm not sure. Or they threaten violence in the comment section of an article without revealing their real identity. Does this sound like the type of person who is brave enough to throw paint on a passerby in the middle of the street? No. Like the amount of courage it takes to, number one, just pretend to be someone you're not in any situation, I think is, is a brave thing to do when you're doing it for good, right? But particularly in these awful factory farm situations and then having to witness that for months because yes, the point is to get as much evidence as possible. I, I can't believe this has to be explained, but like, yeah, to have to endure that amount of abuse, witnessing of abuse in the hopes that it will help future animals. You're so brave wearing your fur and going after the vegans, <laughs> the pussy vegans, <laughs> so much courage.